Africa has always had a very, very strong private sector story, which many, many investors across the globe want to know more about and get access to. So our initiative was to initially identify a series of companies, groups of businesses that have done extremely well. And on that front, we work with a number of key partners. So the African Development Bank, CDC, which is the UK's development finance institution, PwC, um, who are our main partners, to find those companies, validate them, and publish them in the report. So the key to this is to get more visibility and more exposure for those African businesses. And in this year's report, uh, 360 companies have been identified as being regional champions. So our stop on this occasion is in Kenya, in Nairobi. Uh, last month we were in, uh, in South Africa, in Johannesburg, and then we have five more cities um, to go um, on this particular roadshow before we, uh, we finish up with a final roadshow in New York uh, in late July. So Africa has now such a great representation in terms of expertise and core competencies. So whilst you would expect to see very compelling stories in the extractives industry or in agriculture, you're actually seeing innovation from Africa in the world of finance, in the world of technology, in particular from Kenya here in Nairobi. We've seen many, many companies who've been doing very well in the area of sustainable energy and renewable energy. So companies like Delight and M Copper, who featured in both the 2017 publication and the 2019 publication. And this is very much testament to the strength of the African entrepreneur and the key challenges that that entrepreneur has to face on an everyday basis. And this strength is leading to innovation and indeed expertise in that area. So we've been seeing the collection of these companies grow over the years. Um, and we're hoping to, that these companies become more, more, more visible, but also more investable over the long term. And that's the key goal of this publication. So work is happening between all of the various uh, elements, the all capital markets authorities, the FCA, so the Financial uh, um, Conduct Authority in the UK, the UK regulator, uh, the two stock exchanges, uh, CS, uh, CDCS and, uh, and, and CREST in the UK, which are the, uh, the settlement platforms or international securities um, uh, um, depositories. So all of that work culminating in finding the best solutions to make dual listing easier. The reason for that is that we believe that capital should be interoperable. You should be able to access um, a London capital base here in Nairobi and equally for a London company, UK company, to access company here. That's the democratization of finance and that's the direction that LSE is looking for in terms of our collaboration with exchanges like the NSE. It's a, it's a very interesting question and obviously the question with Atlas is, is one that um, we continue to decipher, um, which was listed both on AIM and the GEMS market here. So ultimately um, the companies had uh, delisted for, for various reasons, primarily corporate finance and linked to governance. I think the only thing we can say, it's very difficult to comment on a single company, but I think the best way to describe this is that um, both of those markets lay down some very, very um, straightforward rules in terms of governance, in terms of transparency, in terms of disclosure and initial el eligibility. All companies at the time when they enter the market will adhere to those specific rules and regulations. Um, over time, um, companies may have challenges and sometimes those challenges um, may essentially create um, difficulties for those companies to continue to meet those obligations. The important fact with a, with a market like LSE and NSE is that immediately if those challenges are recognized that the company does what it can in terms of talking to investors and ensuring that there's clear communication of what's happening. And I believe that's what happened with that, uh, that specific organization. It was very clear that that delisting was, was going to happen. To your question, will it put other companies off? Absolutely not, in our opinion. Capital markets are there to fund strategic growth 
um, and to, 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 to drive um, the, the, the ambitions of companies. And they're important. They're the heartbeat of any economy and access to functioning capital markets uh, will continue to be there. But what we'll see is that companies will become um, more discerning uh, as, they, as they approach markets and, and hopefully will, will, will inculcate higher standards so that these rare instances of market failure um, become less. We are technology partners with the NSE. Um, so LSE technology um, drives the equity market here in, uh, in, um, in Kenya. Um, you heard the CEO of the NSE talk about the development of new markets, so the new derivatives market, a REITs market, a GDR market. All of these markets will require different nuances within the technology in order to develop them and provide the right trading platform. So ultimately, investors are concerned about speed of transaction, but also robustness of transaction. You know, is there enough uh, um, safeguarding within the settlement process? Is there a central counterparty to reduce counterparty risk? Um, is there a um, significant um, market surveillance structure so that you're able to monitor very easily and quickly trading anomalies? That's what our partnership continues to develop over time. It's working on those elements to ensure that Kenya's market is very much a 21st century market fit for purpose for Kenya's Vision 2030. Um, for those of us that operate in Africa, we're not actually surprised by the level of female entrepreneurship. Africa has always been a matriarchal society where women are very important, not just in the home, but very much so in the workplace, very much in terms of being um, drivers of innovation for lots of different reasons. The number you've mentioned, 19% for Kenya, is slightly below the average for the publication, which was 25%. But interestingly, that is three times the number that you would see in a Western European uh, scenario and example, where female bosses, females on boards is a huge question right now in terms of how to empower more women to take their rightful place um, running companies driving innovation. So Africa can still be proud of the numbers. Kenya can still be proud of the numbers. Um, they definitely demonstrate and support um, some real key attributes of this continent.